Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. We are here in the VAB, taking a very quick look at the uh, Rove 4.1. Uh, this is a latest prototype after the um, interesting successes of the uh, previous rover we sent to the moon. Uh, I do intend also to send this one to the moon, just as kind of a test bed. It does have a full complement of scientific experiments, uh, nothing that needs to be returned, however, uh, as far as the ones that will work. Uh, I do want to point out very briefly while I'm on the subject. Um, shit, where did it go? There, this thing. The uh, XRF spectrometer, which is non-RP0 anyway. Uh, no matter where I put it on this rover and how much I make sure that nothing stands in its way of hitting the ground, it will not collect a sample and perform any science. So that's uh, 7,500 funds we are not going to waste on this rover. But uh, anyway, yeah, I've also been experimenting a bit with some of these robotic parts that I just don't have very much experience with. So um, as you can see, the descent stage is on the top now instead of the bottom to avoid it from detonating the wheels, which, uh, if I hit the button correctly, will fold out nicely. Uh, I have been testing this in the space plane hangar for clearances and tolerances and you know, making sure that the wheels don't break when you fold them out, which it hasn't done here in Earth gravity, so I can assume then that it won't do that in Martian or Moon gravity. And we also have these deployable retro rockets so that we don't have to have an obscenely large fairing, and also because it's just kind of cool. And um, the fuel pass-throughs have worked in testing, so I'm very confident in that as well. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. Oh, yes, the... Uh, landing system. You'll notice there's no landing legs on this because of the uh, retro pack being on the top. I've gone instead with uh, airbags. There's four of them to placed uh, throughout the rover in places where if the rover should tip over, I can deflate and inflate airbags accordingly to try to get it back uh, right side up and help get the wheels underneath it, which them articulating also does kind of help with that uh, leveling process in making sure that we can set this guy down uh, wheels first. Uh, we can jettison these airbags also for quite a nudge, but I don't really see the need to do that. So uh, hopefully we'll actually be able to get this guy on the surface with wheels intact and take a, uh, a nice long excursion. So I'm going to uh, build out a uh, lunar insertion stage. Uh, I don't imagine it will need a braking stage, and then we'll place a rocket underneath it. Uh, this comes in just a little over 2 tons total, 2.35, including the uh, braking stage. So, and that's that's really most of it. If we were to get rid of that, we'd probably be right around a ton, maybe. So, <laughs> it's, I mean, if you compare it to a Kerbal size, it's probably uh, the size of a nice mid-sized sedan. Or at least a uh, performance compact. Just the rover, not the... Not the uh, retro stage, but um, so I, yeah, as far as like how it compares to actual rovers that we've deployed places, oh boy, there we go. <laughs> let's uh, let's get this up in the air, shall we? And maybe centered along some lines. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and build out the uh, lunar insertion stage, and we'll get a rocket underneath it. And yeah, that'll be that. <laughs> I'll pick you guys up in just a second. All right, well, there you have it. Uh, I've chose to bring back a, an old friend for this one. This is the uh, RA-9B. Uh, <clears throat> I did upgrade the two uh, RL-10s on this uh, Twin Centaur upper stage um, to our latest model. I think it's uh, a little bit bump in ISP and a higher 
thrust, 74 kilonewtons versus like 64, 65, something like that. So we just need to get a protective aero shell on this. And air, that would be under the aerodynamics category, wouldn't it? Yes. Uh, so use. Seems fitting, doesn't it? All right. Wow. <laughs> our, our, our payload is as big as our, our transfer stage, you know whatever works for you all right and we'll get this uh staging set up here probably just needs to be there after booster set we'll save and uh let's get one of these built shall we oh i didn't even check our build time on it derp <laughs> well uh even not using any available spare parts we could slap one of these together in about 66 days so uh that's pretty cool <laughs> I guess we'll be getting to that uh, shortly, although we do have a few other things that we need to uh, tend to in the meantime. So I'll pick you guys up in just a little bit. And welcome back. So we are rejoining our uh, Mercury flyby mission that I have not given up on hope yet. But uh, its initial maneuver has... Uh, well, it's about to encounter Mercury's SOI, and we can tell just how small Mercury's SOI is because that's how big it is. And man, we are close to the sun. I was actually getting some heat warnings here on our, uh, said our Agena Avionics package on the way in here, which is uh, nice and very interesting. So I was going to pop out here to the map view. Uh, I have this node that you're seeing down here is actually way over there uh, another month from now, and that's to give us uh, another encounter with Mercury. It is uh, 2,500 meters per second, but it's mostly, uh, well, it's a little bit of plane change correction and a uh, little bit of other alteration. As you can see, our course is still very, very not uh, in plane with Mercury. That's not really a problem yet, although I... I don't know. I haven't quite figured out all the fixes I'm going to make, but I figure every little fly past of Mercury that I can get gives me a little bit more um, interesting information. And another pass, another chance to levy some science and get some cool things going. So currently I'm going to set up Flight Computer. Uh, very first thing we're going to do is right after we hit our encounter. So I'll set that delay for about 10 minutes. Yeah, there you go, 10 mic. Thank you. And we'll go through and run our full complement of scientific experiments here. So, log radio plasma, um, log imaging data. We'll go ahead and start the multispectral scan. We'll get what little bit that we can. Uh, log irradiance scan, and we've got our full complement of five over here also. Pressure impact, RADS, temperature, and perturbation data. Did the perturbation data take? Yes, okay, good. And, of course, analyze telemetry. All right. And then we want to try to uh, make sure that we can nail it at periapsis also. So let's focus in our view here. Our time to periapsis is 1 hour and 59 minutes, 50 seconds. So 1 hour, 59 mic. I'm just going to go ahead and include the 30 seconds uh, in hopes that I can get all of these things toggled by then. So we'll give it a log imaging data because hopefully we'll be close to Mercury by then. Magnetometer. That doesn't work in low science or low space. Plasma wave. Temperature. Perturbation. I don't know if I got radiation already. If we get it twice, no big deal. So basically we're just going to do this flyby like we've done all the flybys of Jupiter's moons and hope that I get the timing correct. Maybe I will, maybe I won't, who knows, but uh, I think we're all set up and we're ready to go. 
So we'll just revert to our tracking of our spacecraft here and get this flight underway. Switch to ship view because it's infinitely more interesting. There we go. All right, there's our alarm. We are about to delete on change. I set that alarm twice for no apparent reason. All right, we've got some science. Oh, wow. Plasma wave gives us 45. Spectral analysis will give us another 40. That's cool. Let's make sure. Yep. Added. Magnetometer. That's just another 25. Glad that we didn't use that one already. Irradiant scan. That was a new one, but it skipped over it. We'll get there. Atmospheric pressure scan. Oh, all right. Well, we got the magnet. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Maybe I should just let these happen before I just start hitting buttons. All right. There's 25 science for something. Uh, telemetry scan. We've got that already. Uh, irradiant scan is 60. Atmospheric pressure scan is 30. Micrometeorite is spent. All right. <laughs> I think that concludes our high space science for Mercury. Wow. Okay. Um, if I can get a screenshot this time, that might be a winner. Although... I do want to get in a lot closer, monitor this flyby best I can. Why are we coming out of time warp? What did I miss? Well, apparently nothing, because it's not going to tell me why. Maybe somebody just changed SOI. <laughs> uh, we are in no danger of piling into Mercury. But it, it is quite cool to just watch things zoom up on you like that. Wow. <laughs> That's an interesting uh, where the North Pole is, kind of the texture wrapping. And, yep, we're going back up. Oh, bingo, we nailed it. Just above Mercury's Midlands. All right, I'm just going to let them all collect and then we'll radio in. But wow, that's the closest I've actually came to actually getting things timed correctly <laughs> all right uh geiger counter nets is 54. Yeah, it looks like we actually covered more than one biome with that because right now we're over mercury's plantilla but some of these are from the uh, midlands some of them are just generic near mercury telemetry analysis uh 40.5 interesting divisions there uh 72 for the multi-spectral scan uh, magnetometer scan gives us another 45. Radio plasma wave gives us 81. Temperature scan has been done. Gravity scan has been done. 54 for the atmospheric pressure scan again. No comms. Oh, no. <laughs> Was I doing that the whole time? Oh, all right. Well, they're still stored there. And, looks, and we'll be uh, collecting data. Until we get to about the 500 kilometer mark. I thought it was 300 kilometer on this thing, but at least the lens is pointed down. We got that part correct. All right, well, uh, we're just going to have to go through and manually transmit in all of those sciencey things uh, once we've established a connection. Presumably, once we clear the other side of Mercury, we can radio in all this cool stuff we got. Not a big problem. We'll see you again soon, Mercury. Don't you worry. I'll be back for you. All right, connection reestablished. So what what did I what did I miss? I wonder. Uh, yeah, we'll just go through and hit review data on everything. No, nope, that one's fine. That one's fine. Review data. Uh, review data. And we'll also do analyze data. You you do we have one here in the telemetry? We do not. Okay. So now we just gotta wait uh, a couple of minutes. Our delay is about four hundred and two seconds. So then there's that. Alright. Try to time warp through it. 
Come on. Did those commands just not go through? All right, here we go. 81 science for the radio plasma wave. Nice. Oh, that's so bright. <laughs> Geiger counter 72. Uh, Multi-spectral scan nets us nothing, so we'll just uh, go ahead and reset that. Because uh, I don't think it logged near enough data. All right, magnetometer, that's 45. Geiger counter is 54. Pressure scans, 54. I hope all of those went through. I stopped looking. I really need to pay attention to that. Oh, well. And why did that node jump down so much? I feel like that probably means it was altered. Yeah, probably, because it's not showing my encounter anymore. So I'm just going to have to replot that. Uh, no big deal. But uh, this one stretched on a little long enough. So I think that's going to do it for us today, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out. I too appreciate it. And I'll see all of you in the next one. So until then, see you later.